if you're in college and you always have assignments due like every 24 to 72 hours like me, sometimes you forget to plug in your devices and you may be shocked to find out that they're completely dead the next morning when you're off on your way to school. Well, today I have a solution of how we can fix that problem. And it's very simple, it's a power bank. The simple solution to a standalone power bank is one that's gonna be big enough that you don't have to recharge every two to three days. And well, the answer to our solution today is gonna to be the Morphec 50K milliamp hour battery. I'm gonna be running a little experiment on this to see just how quickly this thing can actually recharge. If you just wanna know right now what that time is, it's about a 20 to 30 minute recharge time for every 5% of battery. If you're interested to see how we ran this experiment, I'm gonna ask you to stick around to the end of the video. If not, I will be doing a longer series on this and covering some more topics on these power banks. Anyways, let's get into it. Before I get any further into this video, I just wanna make a quick shout out to my professors, Kyle and Holly, for giving me some amazing stats training to help me tackle this problem today. Lithium ion batteries are used in just about every electronic device on the market, as they were the replacement to the common AA battery that we have all become very familiar with. The details of this experiment are quite simple. As we set up our camera to film the 50k milliamp hour battery's draw time, we do this to get an idea of how much power can be replaced into the system over a span of a 5% recharge cycle. The reason that we're doing this experiment is because I was curious about just how useful our new power bank would be. In the early days of power banks, the overall product quality was not too much to get excited about, and that's for a number of reasons, but I'm not going to address that in this video. Mainly a power bank's ability to be recharged can often be overlooked when considering what to add to your work bag. Now, knowing that time is an irreplaceable asset, the amount of time your power bank needs to be fully charged becomes an important factor when making a purchasing decision. If you're new to this channel, we'd like to welcome you. And if you find this topic interesting or informative, we would like to encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel for other topics that are similar to this one. My full disclaimer before getting into the experiment, I'm not an expert on calculating electrical units, but I use the internet to help me get as close as I possibly could. If any electricians, engineers, or math experts are out there watching, please feel free to drop in on the comments and let us know how we did. Starting with the experiment, I would like to introduce some of our overall analysis criteria. Starting with our control variable, we use a power extension hub with USB A and C charging capabilities. Our independent variable, I will work on a separate video for this device, but understand that we used a USB C to C connection on the 20 watt power delivery channel on this same USB C hub. The dependent variable. Here are the results of this experiment that we would like to share with you. We ran the experiment and the overall charge time to go from 45% to 50% on the display was about 19 minutes and nine seconds. At a power displacement of five volts, we should reasonably expect the system to come in at roughly 51,067 milliamp hours. That is a margin of 0.02% for overall power storage. Depending on the exact level the 45% was displayed at for the power rating, we can conclude that there is 229 seconds of time that we cannot account for unless we have the battery completely drained to zero, or in other words, three minutes and 49 seconds. In theory, we can conclude that the predicted time would be about roughly 17 minutes and 45 seconds, while the observed time of this experiment was 19 minutes and 9 seconds. In other words, this leaves us with a difference of roughly 1.64 or 1 minute and 38 seconds. I'll save you the boring part of running through all the mathematical equations and just kind of summarize on everything that we computed here. I took our expected value of the 1,149 seconds and I rounded that down to 1,140 seconds to give us a number that we can calculate off of about 19 minutes. We then took this value and divided the new value of the joules, which was 22,800, to figure that in a single given minute, approximately 1,200 joules are transferred. 
In conclusion, the results of this experiment turned out to be far more interesting than I would have initially expected, because we do not truly know the exact charge of the 45% relative to the meeting of the 50% mark. In other words, there's 1 minute and 38 seconds. That should give us roughly 1,656 joules in this scenario. And when we plug that back into the equation, we're left with a final value of roughly 50,976 milliamp hours by our best efforts, given the data that we've collected. I hope you found this video interesting or in the very least entertaining because it was really quite a bit more complex of a problem to solve than I had originally expected. Thanks for tuning into the channel and we can't wait to catch you all in the next one.